So this is Todd's weight here. Started out 348 pounds. Like I said, he's on Wagovi, GLP-1 receptor agonist. And now he's just come off it now and he's down at 221 pounds. My God, he's nearly halved in size. <laughs> Unbelievable. And he looks great. Um, he really does. Now, if we look at his AHI over the past two years, you can see it hasn't really changed much. Like there's not a clear trend here. But if we come down and check out the amount of pressure required to keep that AHI nice and low, check it out. Here it is here. Here's the pressure. So originally, his pressure's peaking at around 25 liters, liters, dickhead, centimeters of water, right? He's on a BiPAP machine here, V-Auto. And now, like I said before, 10 centimeters fixed pressure. It's a big drop in the pressure required to keep air flowing into his lungs. But have a look at this as well. This is interesting. So as he's losing weight here, have a look at the leak rates. The leak rates are actually trending upward. And I don't exactly know why. I have a feeling it has something to do with the mouth leak. And perhaps as Todd is losing a lot of fat, he might also be losing a bit of muscle as well. And perhaps that muscle was supporting his jaw, keeping his jaw up and his mouth closed. Look, I don't know, but perhaps that's something to do with it. And what you can see here is as the leak rates increase, have a look at this, the airflow limitation is also increasing. But I guess what I'm trying to show you here is that with weight loss comes dramatic changes in your CPAP data, your pressure needs, um, everything changes. And it's great to track it here on Sleep HQ. And I wanna show you his O2 data, his blood oxygen data, because Normally I'd be a little bit concerned about that airflow limitation. I'm not so much with Todd, like I kind of am, but I'm not because his oxygen levels are so good. All right, so we've got the sleep stage data here, the average heart rate, and this is interesting, watching his heart rate move up and trend down over time and then trend up again. This is to do with changes in his medication, which is interesting. But look at the SpO2, the blood oxygen, you can clearly see a lovely increase Look at this over time. Can you see that? How good is that? And then also his O2 score improving. And then the drops per hour, the desaturations also improving. All right, so this is why I'm not really worried about Todd because his oxygen level is so nice up here. Look at it. And it's just increasing as that weight comes down, which is exactly what you want to see. Now, for those of you watching who are dealing with all the negative shit associated with being obese, sleep apnea, diabetes, cardiovascular issues, depression, the list goes on and on and on. In the next five years, most of you will likely be taking what's known as a GLP-1 receptor agonist or some sort of version of those drugs, whether it's Wagovi, Munjaro or whatever else in the bloody pipeline. And the reason being is they work really well. And I want to read you some clinical trial results from Eli Lilly's Surmount OSA. And here's the results. Reduction in sleep apnea severity, terzepatide, which is Munjaro, led to a significant reduction in the apnea hypopnea index, AHI, with up to a 62.8% decrease equating to about 30 fewer obstructive apnea events per hour of sleep. Disease resolution. A significant portion of participants achieved disease resolution. In study one, which was participants not on PAP therapy, so they'd been diagnosed with sleep apnea but they hadn't started CPAP therapy yet, 43% reached the criteria for disease resolution while in study two, participants using CPAP therapy, so these were people who had been diagnosed with sleep apnea, they'd been using a CPAP machine, and then they told them to stop using the CPAP machine for the next 12 months, which is a bit rough if you ask me. 51.5% achieved this outcome, disease resolution. Now it's worth noting that disease resolution was defined as an apnea hypopnea index of fewer than five events per hour, or 
an apnea hypopnea index of between 5 and 14 events per hour, so that's the mild range, with a low score on the Epworth Sleepiness Scale, ESS, and I think it was less than 10 from memory. And I think they threw that extra definition in at the end there, just to make the results look a little bit better, but regardless, incredible results. And check out the weight loss. Study one, participants not on PAP therapy, participants experienced an average weight loss of up to 18.1%. This is over the year. And study two, participants using PAP therapy, participants experienced an average weight loss of up to 20.1%. Average across everyone. That's a significant reduction in weight. As I just showed you before, has a dramatic effect on your CPAP data, on your blood oxygen data, on your health, on everything. Some fantastic outcomes. And if you speak to Todd, I've done an interview with him before. If you wanna check that out, click the link above. He will tell you how it's changed his life for the better. And it's gonna be interesting to see what happens now that he's stopped taking Wegovy. Will he put the weight back on? I don't think so. I think Todd's got this. Anyway, mates, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm watching Todd sleep today. Wasn't that exciting? Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates, and if you're trying to lose weight, good luck. Cheers. G'day, mates. This video is sponsored by Sleep HQ. Upload, review, and share your detailed CPAP reports with anyone from anywhere. Visit sleephq.com and join our free community today.